there and welcome to this week's Media News with me, Gareth O'Connor. To kick things off this week, Facebook are working on something a little new. Um, and they want to sell more stuff, not just for themselves, but also for advertisers. And they are about to introduce the want button. Instead of like, you'll be able to say you want something. Whether it looks like this or not, I'm not sure. Um, but kind of cool all the same, because it gets rather than saying you like something, you can say you want something. And this can all be linked through to purchase. How the purchase element is going to work, I do not know yet. Um, whether they're selling space around it or whether it clicks through to purchase immediately or through to an advertiser's site, I'm not sure. Um, but a step in the right direction for monetizing Facebook, that's for sure. Um, Apple are aiming for another big chunk. Currently, Apple have got about 60 to 65 percent market share when talking about tablets. And of course, tablets are something that every computer company is trying to make, and even likes of Google and Amazon. Um, but for those who don't require or who perhaps can't afford the big one, they are bringing out an iPad Mini, um, and then just in time for Christmas as well, I might add. So I guess bad news for everyone else, particularly when you think of their market share, because it's only going to grow. Because um, certainly the Mini is going to be cheaper. But I guess everybody is going mobile. The world, as I've said many times, is going mobile. Um, two weeks ago, I mentioned that 900,000 Android devices were being shipped every single week. Well, two weeks later. One million handsets are being sold every single week. So I think it's safe to say, um, particularly here in New Zealand, we are on the charge and more and more people are going to have a smartphone. Still, I'd say 50 to 60% by the end of the year will happen. Um, and it's all about mobile web. Who knew? In the UK, O2, one of the biggest phone providers, um, have been doing some research on their smartphone users and have found that 25 minutes of every day is spent surfing the web from a smartphone. Which is kind of interesting because taking calls accounts for 12 minutes, which is the fifth most popular thing on a mobile. So if you look at minutes spent each day with your smartphone and activities, browsing the web, 24 minutes, almost 25. Taking social networks, 17 and a half minutes. So I guess if you put those two together, you're looking at about 40, just over 40 minutes a day is spent with some kind of internet online activity. Playing games, listening to music, making calls, they're number five. Checking writing emails, texting. And you think most mobile phone companies talk about calls and texting, but they're fifth and seventh most popular activities. Watching TV, reading books for those with big screens, taking photographs. But in all, they've found that people are spending 128 minutes a day with their smartphone, which is massive. Seriously, if you're not thinking about doing stuff on mobile or you haven't yet, please start thinking about it. There's lots you can do. Republic, speaking of mobile, I've got a mobile. And for anyone, particularly visitors like me, well not visitors, I am a resident, but particularly overseas people who are here, if you want to go on a self-guided walk and history tour of Auckland's waterfront, you can with your smartphone. Nice idea, uh, but a good way again of using QR codes and letting people do more with their smartphones, but you can go on a self-guided tour. Just follow the route and it'll tell you all you need to know about the waterfront. A step too far? I think not, but some people are thinking it might just be, but Google Maps are making some changes. Um, they're not just going to do outside, they're coming indoors. Yes, indeed. Kind of a good thing, I guess, if it's a big business district or a shopping center. Um, don't worry, I don't think they'll be coming into your house or anything. Um, but here's a couple of examples. So this is in beta testing right now, so it will be coming. Um, but kind of cool, particularly, like I say, if you're going to be going to a train station or a big business park or a shopping center. Um, nice idea. Speaking of locations, um, you'll remember I've said on a couple of occasions the importance now of mobile, social, and local. Every campaign and every marketing strategy should come with these three elements. Um, but focusing on local for a while, a new app has just come out called Placed. Um, come out in, uh, in the States. So uh, hopefully it'll be available here too. Um, but basically what allows people to do is... Um, Many marketers and app developers and, of course, agencies allows them to analyze location data, which, again, is huge. It's going to be huge this year um, and in the coming years. Uh, but contextualizing data about a user's location for free to provide a better understanding of how our digital lives overlap with our physical ones. It's kind of a big thing now because your digital life influences your physical life and, of course, vice and, and another way around. Um, so really, really a cool app uh, and good to see that things are starting to move in this place because it allows us to make more things accountable. Um, here's a smart app for you, talking about apps. We created medically diagnosable advertising that turned the advertising into the entrance exam. 
Introducing Mobile Medic. Mobile Medic was an integrated campaign that allowed students to use a range of diagnostic techniques to identify and treat real medical conditions using their smartphones. Each ad presented a patient with a different medical emergency that required the use of unique tools to establish a diagnosis. Students solved increasingly difficult medical challenges in an effort to be rewarded with a defence scholarship. Nauseous and diabetic smoker, pain began whilst moving equipment, denies shortness of breath. Kind of cool, bit of good app. Um, and good to see mobile being used in that way, particularly when you look at recruitment. Nice idea. Speaking of apps, while we're there, Google is branching out analytics. Yes, indeed. And another wonderful thing of making things accountable and measurable. Um, they're now beta testing through mobile apps analytics, which is cool. But if you make an app, isn't it wonderful to be able to track how people are using that? Um, allowing you then to make your apps better. Uh, but nice, like a forest in idea grows, you'll remember a while ago, in you know, Sydney, um, for Lego's 50th or maybe 60th anniversary in the country, they created this experience, uh, Lego Forest, but they've now brought, branched it out, and they've taken it out to the outback. But it's a lovely idea, right? Very simple. If you take 5%, 10% of your advertising budget to create experiences that people could enjoy, and then be shared online, be it social, be it through video, you're going to reach significantly more people, and it's going to drive a little bit of talkability. Word of mouth, word of mouth. Um, which is always a lovely idea. Not enough people do it, but a nice idea. And here it is at night time. Very pretty. Um, but always good to try and think of ways you can create experiences with your advertising. Allow people to become part of it. Good work from Ogilvy Town and Yesendi. I like this very much. <laughs> Really brilliant piece of work. <clears throat> you think it's so simple, but I guess good ideas are always simple. Um, but a really good use of children to get people to think about the stupidity that is smoking. Um, really good work. Um, and here's a good, here's some more good work. Good use for YouTube star. Um, Lauren Luke is a well-known, she's a self-taught British makeup artist who does makeup tutorials on YouTube. And her videos have been watched about 140 million times over the past five years. Now I think certainly for, um, well for any audience, but I mean it's great use um, of an online star, not star I guess, but an, it's a great example of an influencer strategy. And using someone who clearly speaks to a target audience to use them to spread um, a message. And this is a great example for Refuge. Hiya everyone. I'm sorry I haven't been online much lately, but I'm back, I'm here. Um, I've had a bit of a rough time, but I'm going to be doing a video today on how to cover up. I'm first going to start with some foundation. If you apply a colour that is just gently off tone with your own skin tone, you can cover any fresh bruising. So just apply it lightly to start off and you can build it up as you go. If you've got a lot of bruising from being pushed hard against a coffee table, you can gently apply layer after layer and you will cover it up slightly. I know it might hurt. Just, just try your best. And that's, 
It's looking a little bit better so far. For my lips, I'm using a little bit more foundation. You might want to put concealer on over any splits that are caused from watches or rings. If you've got some bruising from a jealous type of partner, you can always just put your hair down to the side. If it's not long enough, don't worry because a scarf is ideal for this. So I'm going to be using a scarf. And you can kind of hide it and cover it up. So that's You can see where this is growing, but it's a wonderful way of using someone who can influence, particularly when you think it's very difficult for a lot of women to speak up about this sort of thing. Um, but it's been pushed out around social media. There's also a hashtag on Twitter called Don't Cover It Up. Um, but it is a wonderful way um, to try and get more women to speak up. Um, and yeah, obviously abusive, abusive partners are not a good things. So it's a wonderful example of good work for a good cause. Um, banks need to focus on rebuilding trust. Ernest and Young have just done a, a, a huge global survey, interviewed nearly 30,000 people in 35 markets, and they found that 90% of consumers pretty much now are satisfied with their bank, which of course is a wonderful thing. Um, of, a of the 28,500 people, 68% were satisfied, 19% uh, were satisfied, meaning 87% of people are now satisfied or have a favorable impression overall. But interestingly, they found now that 40% of people those polled had lost trust in the banking industry, which of course is no surprise. Look at the GFC, look at things going on now in Europe, with Greece, Spain, uh, obviously the Barclays debacle. Um, but it is an important thing, particularly when you're thinking now banking and doing brand work, it is always good to consider and think about um, how you can rebuild trust um, and what you can do uh, through marketing and advertising to help that. Um, and I guess it's a good thing, but particularly now when you think of the rise of people now who are looking to switch. It used to be around 7%, but now 12% of people are looking to switch banks this year of the 30,000 people that were polled. And also, interestingly, multi-banking is on the rise. So years ago, of course, people would be with one bank and stick with that one bank. Well, that's now fallen from 41% to 31% of people. Uh, and those who are with three or more banks um, has risen by 11%, up to 32% of people now. So, of course, there's a lot more people in the market and a lot more people are doing more with more than one bank. Um, when seeking advice, though, about banking products, like with most things, friends, family, and colleagues are still number one. Uh, and then, like most things, you know, be it mobile telephones, be it um, utilities, uh, comparison sites came in at number two. Um, but word of mouth certainly is still the biggest contributor to people switching. With ads there, 57%. Same as media reports. Um, do they still have it? I'll let you be the judge of this, but I would say they probably do, but... People often ask me... Do you know where courage comes from? No, where does courage come from? Comes from here! So this is the third instalment um, for Old Spice. Of course, they had the multi award and very successful. Um, campaign with for your your man could smell like me um, then there was a more muscly strong one of the st which t spoke about the strength of old spice and now this one i guess the more uh metrosexual male i would say um, but this is the last thing with from me this week hopefully you enjoyed this danger excites me but i can't fully enjoy it when i feel like fear and body odor so i prepare myself with a manly scent of old spice danger zone <laughs> Because even if something bad does happen to a danger zone man, it won't smell like something bad happened. Because the secret is more like hell is here. And when you smell like Old Spice Danger Zone, trust me, you'll smell like you have nothing to worry about. You smell like you look amazing. Amazing, I know. Entertaining ad. But then you should entertain. Advertising should be entertaining. Trying to sell a stale story. Make it good. Make it shareable. Um, and that's it from me this week. And I will see you next week.